which fantasy character would make the worst roommate? Does Gandalf leave his dirty robes on the floor? Will Locke Lamora con you out of three months' rent? What's Professor McGonagall's credit score? And who keeps leaving up the toilet seat? We'll find out this week on The Great Fantasy Debate. <laughs> Welcome. I'm your host, Drea. Now, let's meet our debaters. On my right, we have the Sith Busters. <laughs> Captain by Naomi Novik, author of the Nebula Award-winning novel, Uprooted, and its follow-up, Spinning Silver. Helping her illustrate her points today is comedian Sarah Smallwood Parsons. And opposing them is Resting Witch Face. <laughs> Captain by Marie Lu author of the Young Elite series. Assisting her is comedian Sean Donnelly. Sith Busters, you won the coin toss backstage, so you will go first. You will have one minute to present your case for the worst fantasy roommate. Then, the opposing team, you guys are gonna have 30 seconds for rebuttal. After both teams have argued and rebutted, I'm gonna make the judgment based on clarity, persuasiveness, and whoever wants to pay my rent. You know what time it is. Time to slay your piece. The absolute worst roommate would be Mr. Norrell from Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Mr. Norrell is a protagonist of Susanna Clarke's 2004 novel, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. It's set in 19th century England, where Gilbert Norrell and his frenemy Jonathan Strange have brought practical magic back into use in a society that believed it to be long extinct. Look. Gilbert Norrell is nonstop grumpy. The magician society asks him to demonstrate some magic. Simple request. He responds with an attorney's letter. Can you imagine a roommate that litigious? You don't do the dishes, you're gonna end up on people's court? So unnecessary. And can you imagine negotiating the lease agreement? Oh no. Mr. Norrell has collected every magical book known to man. Okay, listen, we all love books, all right? But where are they going? Okay, every book known to man? There is no space in this apartment, okay? There's no space in the hallway, no space in the garage. I mean, no space for a bed or a couch. And then all of a sudden, I'm sleeping on hard covers and using soft covers as a blanket. And he's super petty. Mm. He put a spell on a book his own student wrote so no one else could read it. As an author, that is an absolute nightmare. But for anyone else, uh, say you're a chef. He puts a spell on your menu, your restaurant closes, and now you can't pay the rent, and then he sues you for it. Look, having friends over is fine, but his friends are a bunch of creeps, okay? He's got a servant named Childermass. Okay, he was always sulking around in his ratty old top hat, talking about bringing back the Raven King and eating my grape nuts, okay? Yeah, I like old people's cereal, fine. Okay, and then he has this friend who he calls the gentleman with the thistle down hair. It's like, number one, come up with a shorter nickname, man, all right? Maybe a little thistle or gent, I don't know. Keep your hands off my grape nuts. <laughs> Resting witch face. You've got 30 seconds to rebut starting right now. Yeah. Listen, having a litigious roommate is great. You know that he's going to go over your lease with a fine tooth comb. That landlord wouldn't dare turn the heat on late or let repairs go undone. Norrell and his lawyer are looking out for you. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like he's hoarding cats. He's hoarding magical books. Who wouldn't want that? You can learn every spell there is. You can teleport to work. You can teach your horse to talk. You can conjure a pie whenever you want. <laughs> you can make your bottom half invisible. As far as I'm concerned, a house full of magical books is all positive. That's your time. To recap, Sith Busters claims that Gilbert Norrell is a fussy old wizard who will tell you to get off his lawn, even though it's your lawn too. While Resting Witchface says that he could be a really powerful ally that'll leave you alone if you just leave him alone. Resting Witchface, it's your turn now. You're gonna have one minute to make your team's argument. Let's hear what fantasy character will be the worst roommate. <laughs> Listen, the worst fantasy roommate would be a sandworm. <laughs> Sandworms are gigantic, worm-like creatures featured in Frank Herbert's Dune series of novels, which depict a battle for control of the galaxy starting and ending on the desert planet Arrakis. Melange, nicknamed Spice, is a product of the sandworm life cycle and is a highly addictive drug. They are also called dragons of the desert due to their vicious nature. First of all, 
Sandworms are huge. You think your place feels cramped now? Sandworms are over a thousand feet long. Good luck finding a spot to keep your Blu-rays with Sandy lounging around in the living room. <laughs> and they suck up all the water. These things can transform a whole terraform planet into a desert just because they don't like the water? Oh, so I can't take a bath because you don't like the humidity. Mm. I can tell you right now, that's gonna be the most mm -hmm. frequent fight we would have. Mm -hmm. After a long day, I need a soak. That's right. <laughs> They're also extremely territorial. If another sandworm comes near them, they roar and they get ready for a fight. So I can't have my sandworm friends over now. If I throw a party, I can't guarantee you who's not coming over. And I'm not gonna say, I live with a sandworm, so if your SO is a sandworm, you can't bring them. I don't wanna be that person. <laughs> Me neither. Also, they make spice. It's an addictive chemical. They're like a living mesh lab. You wanna live with a meth lab? Their dirtbag dealer friends always coming over, it stinks, there's spice paraphernalia all over the place, and you're just waiting for the day when the feds kick in your door. I'm already stressed enough without Breaking Bad playing out in my living room. That's time! <laughs> I don't know, something tells me the worst roommate is Sean if he doesn't get his soak. <laughs> Very true. All right, Sith Busters. <laughs> You've got 30 seconds to rebut, and your time starts now. All right, yeah, sandworms are big, but that means your living space is big too. Even if it wasn't before the sandworm moved in. You've been dreaming of knocking down that wall, opening up the living room. Guess what, it's all done, and you didn't even have to hire contractors. I mean, that sounds like an absolute deal to me. And maybe it's harder to have a party, but at this point, Who's having their own parties? I mean, mm. the ideal is you go to someone else's party, drink way too much, you trash the place, and then you go home to your beautiful, clean, partyless home. Plus, sandworms smell like cinnamon, so you mm. don't have to spend half your paycheck on expensive candles and air fresheners anymore. Mm. Sandworms eat sand. That means they're not gonna eat your food, okay? No need to label everything in the fridge so you don't accidentally eat your roommate's peanut butter, which happens all the time and does not make you a bad roommate, Karen. <laughs> That's Time! <laughs> to recap, Rusty Whitface argues that a sandworm from a rackus will cause a ruckus. But Sith Busters <laughs> makes the case that you'll end up with a big common area that just smells like cinnamon. These are really good arguments, but we gotta turn up the heat with the Dragonfire Challenge. Both roommates sound bad, but in order to decide who is the lowest of low, I need to hear the worst thing this roommate has done. So, it's time for some roommate horror stories. Sarah, you may take the flashlight first, if you would be so kind. <laughs> One night, I hear a creaking noise in the bathroom, so I go to investigate, I turn on the light, rip the shower curtain aside, and find an animated corpse again, okay? Norrell used his magic to bring yet another English nobleman back from the dead. And then the desiccated corpse looks at me, opens her rotted mouth, and groans, you're out of toilet paper. <laughs> Even though I bought it the last five times. <laughs> Chilling. John, you're up. I wake up in a sweat. It's a thousand degrees in my apartment again. I go to the thermostat and it's set at 90 degrees. I know it's him, my roommate the sandworm. <laughs> he may be from a desert planet, but here in Queens, we gotta pay for the heat. I think about the gas bill, and my sweat starts to sweat. Now I gotta scrape together half a $200 heating bill, then it hits me. How does he keep turning it up? He has no arms. Does he use his mouth? I'll never know. And that's the true horror. Also, he ate my mom. <laughs> Those both rocked me to my core. I've heard enough to make up my mind, which means it's time for the proclamation. The character who would make the worst fantasy roommate is... The Sandworm. Yay! Do you agree with my decision? Or is there another roommate that you think would be worse? Let us know in those comments. We'll see you next time on the Great Fantasy Debate!
Growing up, I never dreamt I could get rich playing video games. If I'd known that, I would have played Roller Coaster Tycoon until I became an actual tycoon. In Marie Lu's novel, Warcross, hacker slash bounty hunter Amika Chen becomes rich and famous after glitching into an online game called Warcross. She's gotta survive the tournament while trying to fight a hacker named Zero and trying to smash the game's inventor, Hideo. Which makes me wonder, is the guy who created Roller Coaster Tycoon single? If you are, and you're watching, hit me up. Warcross by Marie Lu. Buy it now!